What's up guys, it's Mark here for another episode of Red Wolf TV and as you can see, we are with a very special guest and I'm sure you know who this is, judging by his face, all over YouTube. I'm with Novridge. Hey everybody. Today we have a very special episode for you guys. We're doing Novridge's personal top three sniper rifles of choice. Now before we get into that, Novridge, what got you into sniping or being an airsoft sniper? Ha, ah, that's a long story. So, when I was a kid, I already enjoyed all those sniper movies, you know, the heroes are always the snipers in the movies. And video games, obviously, mm -hmm. so I wanted to go all in, I bought myself an airsoft sniper, played some games, and I really enjoyed it. And then I had the chance to do the sniper training at the military, and this got me even more excited to be an airsoft sniper. So after the military, I'm still stuck to the role of the airsoft sniper. Wow, that's really cool. Very, very interesting. Now. Let's get into the main event of this video, your top three sniper rifles of choice. So now we're going to start with his top three choices. The third choice, which one is your third choice out of these three here? So my third choice is the Silverback SRS. The reason for this is one of the things that I like is the bulb system. So it means that the magazine is in the back of the grip, which makes the inner barrel very long. So that's a very unique design, that's a big plus point for this gun. What I also like about this gun is the externals. It's all CNC machined aluminium, which makes it feel great. And the stock, out of polymer, also very massive, feels very good in your hands. So, what else do I like about this gun? It's the internals. It's already pre-upgraded, kind of pre-upgraded. The parts, the piston, the spring guide, everything inside here is already reinforced. So you can pretty much drop in every spring you want and it will shoot the FPS you want to achieve. I would definitely agree. The SRS is definitely one of the most unique airsoft guns out of these three. Now, you told us what you liked about it. What are some of the things you may not like about the SRS? There are some things I don't like about it. Let's start with the magazine. So the magazine release, it's, it feels kind of awkward. You see, I'm gonna grab the magazine like this, but the button isn't in the reach of my thumb. It's here. So to take out this magazine, you see, I can't even do it. It's really awkward. I have no idea why they designed it like this. It's the same on the real SRS. But still, you see, it's ambidextrous. Same on the other side. I have no idea why they did it like this. What I also don't like about this gun is the push bolt system. So in order to wreck the gun, you pull the bolt back, no resistance, and you charge the spring when you push the bolt forward. And that's a very awkward movement. With a harder spring, maybe around 550 FPS, it's not possible anymore to charge the spring unless you're Arnold Schwarzenegger. So that's a big disadvantage. But Silverback already came out with a solution for this. They invented the pull bolt conversion kit, which means that it's the other way around. You charge the spring when you're pulling the bolt. The thing is that they charge obviously additional for that. So the gun is already at a higher price. Additional, the Pull bolt conversion kit makes this gun kind of expensive mm -hmm. on a higher price tag. Right. There's another thing I don't like about this gun. It's the hop-up chamber. It's two screws and you, with those two screws you can adjust the hop-up in both directions. So those screws directly press onto the hop-up rubber. It sounds kind of fancy because in theory you can adjust it in both directions. Either more hop-up on the left or the right side. So you can adjust those curves and make it go perfectly straight. Sounds great. In reality, it's a real pain to adjust it, especially on the field. It needs so much time to get this thing shoot straight. It's always a little too much on the left or a little too much on the right. And if you want to adjust it, you know, more hop, you have to adjust boss. So, and you need an Allen key for it. Mm -hmm. Adjust it on the field needs a lot of time. That's right. what I really don't like about this gun. I see, I see. That's actually quite interesting. I mean, it's a great, unique looking gun, but I guess not every gun is without its flaws. Yeah, totally. Yeah. There awesome. is no perfect as of snapper rifle. I guess that you're right. So that was your third choice. Let's move on to your second choice. Which one is your choice number two? So my choice number two is the Tokyo Marui L96. This gun here. As you can see, it's a little longer, but it's still very lightweight. So it's very maneuverable, mm -hmm. even for the slacks. What I also like about this gun is that it comes with a VSR-10 compatible hop-up rubber. Unlike the SRS, which comes with an HE hop-up rubber, this hop-up rubber is a little more beefy. It gives you more consistency, more range, and also a better seal. With a Virus 10 style hop-up rubber, you can seal the gun so good that when you close the tip of the barrel and you pull the trigger, the piston actually stops in the cylinder. That's a big plus. Wow. 
Also, the Tokyo Marui L96 was the first L96 where the magazine is on the right place, but it's still a spring-powered sniper rifle, so that's very unique. They invented this cool feeding system, which works great, very reliable. A lot of other manufacturers tried to copy it, but none of them got the reliability of the Tokyo Marui L96. But there are some things I also don't like about this gun. So, the biggest design flaw is the volume of the cylinder. As you can see, the diameter of the cylinder, it's very small, it's very thin. So, if you want to run low FPS, like, you know, everything between 300 to 500, that's no problem at all. But if you want to go above 500 FPS, it's getting a problem, because the air volume doesn't support the volume of the inner barrel anymore. So, you're a little limited on FPS on this gun. If you want to go low FPS, you're totally fine. If you want to go a little higher with the FPS on this gun, like 550, you might get some problems with the air volume issues. That was two of his top three, and let me recap it for you guys. The third choice was the Silverback SRS. Number two was the L96 from Tokyo Marui. Not to make this super obvious now, Novrich, but your number one top choice sniper rifle of the three that we have here. Tell me which one it is. Obviously, it's the gun that I'm always using, the Tokyo Marui VSR-10 sniper rifle. There are many reasons why I prefer this gun over every other gun on the market. First, it's very lightweight. Some people might not like this because it feels really toyish, it's under 2 kilograms, but still, I love it. It's very maneuverable, very lightweight, you can run around with it for hours, your arms don't get tired. What I also love about this gun that there are lots of upgrade parts available for the VSO-10 system. You can exchange pretty much every single part on this gun. Actually, you can build this gun from scratch. You don't even need the Marui VSO-10 base if you have a very big budget. All right, what else do you like about this gun? What I love is the cylinder air volume. As you can see, the cylinder is way bigger than on the Tokyo Marui L96. So it supports the whole barrel length. With this gun, you can go crazy with FPS. I've seen people rocking this gun at 700 to 750 FPS. Wow. So that's a huge amount of power in this small, lightweight gun. And it's also very silent, especially when it's still stock and with the suppressor. There are some things I don't like about the Marui VSR-10, but it's only, it's only a small thing. Because it's so lightweight and so toyish, all the materials are very thin, so it can flex on the barrel a little in both directions. When you're just holding it like this, that's not a problem at all, but if you're leaning against the tree and the tree touches the barrel, it might bend a little to the left, but the scope still stays straight. Mm -hmm. That's a problem, obviously, because the scope and the barrel are not aligned anymore and you will miss your shot. Other than that, it's, for me, it's the perfect gun. Again, a little toyish, but I I really love it. It's my gun of choice. Awesome. And I'm pretty sure you can go on for hours talking about the great oh, things yeah. of the VSR-10. Oh. I hope you guys enjoyed this special episode with Norwich, learning about his top three sniper rifles of choice and which platforms he likes to use. If you would like to watch the reviews of some of these sniper rifles, don't hesitate and click on the links in the description below. Now, if you want to check out any of those three guns, you can check them out at the Red Roof Bay page at www.redroofairsoft.com. I've been Mark, a.k.a. Blue Steel, and thanks for coming on Red Wolf TV, Novridge. Thanks for having me in. Until the next episode, guys, have a good one.